guys. We've been uh, out for about two weeks now, um, but we've been busy with the DSA. So we wanted to start off talking about that. Uh, we joined the Detroit Sports Alliance. Special thanks to everybody there. We appreciate being acknowledged and, and uh, as, as a Detroit YouTube channel, and we appreciate the love and support that they've given us and uh, the shout outs that they've constantly been giving us. It's been very great for our channel. And uh, great for our confidence overall. <laughs> <laughs> Much love, guys. Appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. Especially to Micro Mike, who, you know, not only was the one that brought us into our first uh, DSA roundtable, but also nominated us to be active members of the DSA. So we really appreciate it. Um, so thanks again, Micro Mike. This is the first time that we've had a video after being inaugurated into the, <laughs> the DSA. <laughs> so um, expect to see us there a lot. Expect to see us on Luke G Field Reviews channel, as well as Micro Mike's, and honestly, anybody that has the um, roundtable for any given week. So, yep, and expect them to come on our channel, too. Uh, they obviously have an open invitation. Anybody on the DSA can come on anytime they want, for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, so, also, we wanted to make a shout out to Zachary Graves. We love you. And uh, uh, Funky Nuts, a.k.a. <laughs> George Morgan himself. Uh, we appreciate it. You know, always active in the comments. And uh, you guys were the ones that really told us to get in contact with Micro Mike and the DSA. And uh, it's been great. All right. So first topic we wanted to get into today was talking about our boy, Matthew Stafford. OK, because he just recently celebrated his 32nd birthday. So it looks like quarterbacks can get a little older now. So hopefully that's the case with Stafford. And hopefully we could keep him for a little while because I would hate to uh, let him go a little too early. <laughs> and then another team picks him up. And uh, well, actually, honestly, I'd like to see it. that's the one thing thing that people were saying trade him to the Patriots the one positive that would come out from that is that the <laughs> one positive is that Stafford would win a Super Bowl with the Patriots <laughs> that would crush me dude as a fan <laughs> oh oh I would be so happy for for Matt Stafford because he really deserves it and uh you know there, there was a thing that we were talking about before the show where it was showing you know he, he's top three top five in like almost every statistical category for quarterback um 32 years and, on, and under so he's he, man put him on a better team it's it's this lion's curse you know wasting another generational talent it's it's really sad to see it happen but as lions fans we're here you know detroit call it tribalism if you want but we, we rep our city we rep our uh we rep our team and we want our, our team to succeed so of course i don't want stafford to leave i want him to succeed here yeah. all right so anyway it was Stafford's 32nd birthday, and I wanted to each of us give our most, you know, memorable, favorite moments of Stafford's career because it was that awesome video that came out on Bleacher Report giving all of Stafford's great moments. So, what's your favorite moment, Andrew? Dude, rookie year, man, 2009. You know, playing the Browns, like it's hard to not say this is one of your most favorite moments. Not only as a sports fan, but like as a Stafford fan. You know, what I'm saying, I mean. The dude dislocated his shoulder on, like, the last play of the game. Gets called for pass interference, you know, on the defense. So now they're on the goal line. You know, there's, like, no time left. You know, it was a Hail Mary. And <clears throat> Stafford's in agony. I mean, the dude is just in pain. They had to call a timeout so he could play. He goes back into the game with a dislocated shoulder and throws the game-winning touchdown. You know, like, if that doesn't speak volumes for the type of player he's been ever since his rookie year and coming into the league – I mean, I don't know it does. And, I mean, just the resiliency and just how much I love him. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. That was awesome. And, uh, you know, that, that one thing that I brought out was that people immediately said, oh, man, he's going to be an injury-prone quarterback. He's going to be hurt because that was his rookie year. And then after that, he was hurt for, like, two seasons. So, like, or the rest of that season and, and you know, the second season. So that, that was a scary time as well because we saw that, man, this guy is the man, but. Is he is he somebody that's gonna be hurt, or, and uh, we're not gonna be able to utilize his potential? But that ended up not being the case. He obviously started like a million games after that. He's one of the, you know, yeah, he, he he had one of the highest you know active streaks. So that ended up not being the case. But man, he was the man starting that play. I, I agree with you. Um, but my favorite play of all time is the typical, the Dallas the drive <laughs> at the end of the Dallas game driving all the way down the field, tricking everybody by saying, clock it, clock it, clock it, clock it. 
<laughs> and then he jumps up. He jumps up over the line of scrimmage with the ball. Nobody knows what's going on. He scores a touchdown to win the game. Uh, I, I every time I I watch that replay, he was mic'd up. Same with your play, is mic'd up as well. So honestly, we picked two typical plays because they're both mic'd up and people play them all the time. Dude, every time that mic'd up highlight happens. I tear up like literally I'm like <laughs> I'm a grown man and chills. I can't even handle it. Yeah, it gives me the chills like it makes me so hype. Like, honestly, I I should listen to it like every day. Just get just get me hyper work or something. <laughs> um yeah, so the yeah, I mean two amazing plays, two plays that, you know, really show what kind of a player and what kind of a man Stafford is and uh we love him for it. <laughs> All right. So now that we got our Stafford love out of the way, um, let's let's just dive into the team in general. So there's some news that happened. Oh, well, you know, did you want to touch on the Super Bowl a little bit? Yeah, I can touch on the Super Bowl. Yeah, so, I mean, you guys know what happened. My nod has been like a week already. So, you know, Kansas City won. It was honestly an amazing game. They were tied at halftime. It was back and forth. They were really stopping Mahomes until the very end of the game. It was one of Mahomes' worst performances, in my opinion. Like, he honestly did not play well until the end of the game. And then Sammy Watkins, Burns Sherman, that was awesome. And uh, honestly, it was a good karma because, you know, how uh, Sherman was talking mad crap about the Lions conditioning and how he doesn't want to be run into the ground. Well, honestly, maybe if you were conditioning a little <laughs> more, you wouldn't be gassed in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. And uh, you, you might have stuck with uh, uh, Sammy Watkins in that situation. But, uh, Dude, you know, I, that's I just me with a little salt. <laughs> that's a little salt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of shade. You know what? I love that you brought that up because if you didn't, I was going to. You know, it's. Every time there's something that's going well with the Lions or, you know, big news, they always got shit on us. You know, oh, Matt Patricia, you know, he conditions the team too hard. Right, what right. the heck is that? You're a professional athlete, you know? And that just goes to show, you know, if the 49ers were more conditioned, they would have been able to keep up that same pace in the fourth quarter that they did in the third. Because they let up more points in the fourth than they did in the first three quarters combined. So it's like, dude, your team got gassed. They couldn't rush the passer as well. They couldn't guard the wide receivers, you know, like – if you had better conditioning, you would have been in a better scenario. And so it's like, it just goes to show you that a lot of times the media doesn't portray things the right way. Because I would love for my team to be very conditioned. So then in the fourth quarter, they're still run, you know, running full speed while the other team's like, crap, like I'm, I'm starting to slow down. You know, I'm tired. And it, it just right. goes to show those teams that are conditioned and aren't. And in the Super Bowl's case, the 49ers were not well conditioned. Yeah, and, and special shout out to Kansas City's D line because because like they identified that Kansas City, I mean that the 49ers just had to run the ball. They knew the four, you know, people were giving Kyle Shanahan a lot of crap because they were like, why didn't you just keep running the ball? You're running it so well all throughout the game. Okay, but when the other team knows that you are now only going to run the ball, they can stack the box like crazy, completely blitz, and then that forces. Kyle Shanahan to put it in Jimmy Garoppolo's hand and honestly the play wasn't that bad he missed he, he missed a wide open like George Kittle was wide open on two plays so like really like it was a, it was the right call in my opinion I get that like I, I, like what, what are you gonna do run it three times and just get fourth down because they're, they're stacking the box it's not working and the Kansas City's defense the momentum was already swung and they were ready to take you off there's no way you were going to get a first down by running three times, in my opinion, and Ky clearly in Kyle Shanahan's opinion. So he, I think he made the right play, and the, the dude was open. Jimmy Garoppolo just didn't make the throw. So it sucks, but, you know, that to me, a special shot. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think that Mahomes won this game, and even I, don't even, I wouldn't even have made him the MVP, but you got to make him the MVP. It, it, it was he's definitely Mahomes, a team effort, man. You have to make it. Yeah, but you have yeah. to make him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i mean for sure it's usually the quarterback that gets mvp unless you have some crazy game from another person but i mean like you look at it and there was not one player that played phenomenal for Kansas city it was definitely a team effort man you yeah. know when players needed to step up they did and that's what you need you know like football's a team game i don't care who you have on your team not one player is going to win you every single game you yeah. know so like, and same with they, they stepped up man yeah, and same with the 49ers. They couldn't just rely on Mozart and and uh, uh, Nick Bosa and the defense and whatever. It had to be, or Sherman or anybody, it had to be a combined effort. And 
there are a lot of comparisons being drawn between the 49ers since they were in the senior bowl last year to the lions and people asking questions and stuff like that. And we, we talked last week about, um, Martin Mayhew, you know, he's on the 49ers right now and how he regrets not taking Aaron Donald and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But, um, one thing about the 49ers, since we're talking about them, um, they drafted an offensive tackle in 2016, I believe named Josh Garnett in the first round. And uh, that guy is uh, somebody that we just signed on our team recently. So, Andrew, what do you think about Josh Garnett? Do you think that this guy has potential to be, you know, starting possibly? Or maybe, maybe like, we could coach him up and he could replace Wagner or Decker? Or do you see this guy fighting for a roster spot for a kind of a depth position? Yeah, I mean, I personally, I love the signing. <clears throat> the dude was a first-round pick literally three years ago. You know, like, don't get me wrong, he had a lot of injuries. You know, shoulder, ankle, whatever. But, like, if you had the Billies coming out of college to be a first-round pick, then that means that all these pros saw something in you, right? And you can't avoid injuries. So, like, we're, we got him for cheap. You know, only a couple million dollars. And what do we have to lose? You know, he has a lot of talent. He hasn't had the time to prove it because he's been injured. You know, so like and he and he played through his injury, too. So what he did show on tape in the pros is not, you know, full, uh, you know. Wow, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> it's not really showing the full picture, you know, like if someone has a nagging injury or something like that, it makes it really hard to play at full level, let alone in the pros. So, you know, I'm happy. It could definitely be a reclamation project. And I think, you know, with uh, Hank Faley, I think is how you say his last name. Um, I like that. Yeah, you know, the new old line coach. I think it's just good, you know, and especially putting Glasgow uh, in free agency and letting him test the market. It's nice to have someone that, you know, could potentially be a huge signing for our team, you know, and, like, what do you have to lose for a couple million dollars? So Exactly. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's, it's the low-risk, high-potential type of pick. Like, it, it was the Rashawn Melvin pick. For this year really because you know you got a guy that's shown potential in the past he, he's been hurt and that's the reason why you're able to get him right now at such a cheap deal and, and the reason why he's willing to come here in the first place right so we get him for almost nothing if he doesn't pan out who cares if he does pan out great this is this was an amazing signing wow same yeah. with Rashawn melvin he had a great career or like one or two seasons in uh on the colts he went to the Raiders, had a really bad year. I think he was he was uh, fighting through injuries and a different scheme change and stuff like that. We brought him in. He was doing decently well in the beginning of the season um, when we were doing well, right? And then towards the end, you know, Slay got hurt. Things started to happen. Put pieces started off. to get moved. We had no pass rush, so it's like you, you had to cover for like six, seven, eight, nine seconds, you know? You know, yeah, I'm not kidding. Receivers were yeah. obviously able to break their routes and, and just do whatever. And people were throwing all over us. But that, you know, you're not going to indict Slay for that. You're not going to indict Melvin for that or anybody. It's it's just, it is what it is. And, you know, so it didn't really work out for Melvin. But it honestly wasn't anything that blew us up either, right? Like, it was a cheap, cheap deal. And so is this one. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can get out of this guy. And possibly get a starter quality player, first round quality player for something that cheap. Yeah. I'm, I, I like taking the risk. I like it. Right, low risk, high reward, right? And that's that's what it's all about, you know? If you give someone a second chance in the NFL, it's either they're going to show you what they're capable of, and a lot of players have that chip on their shoulder, or, you know, it could be that unfortunate thing where, you know, the guy just really can't stay healthy or, you know, wasn't meant to be. And so I, I freaking love the move. I thought that was a terrific move by Bob Quinn bringing him in. Yeah. Okay, well, let's move on to our next topic. So our next topic today is talking about the NFL power rankings. So they released their first power rankings of 2020, and uh, they have the Detroit Lions ranked dead last. All right, so. <laughs> so, I mean, can you, can, let's just phrase the question this way. Can you justify any way that you could see the Lions being worst, the worst team in the power rankings? Dude. I could not help but laugh at this freaking thing because every single time they post power rankings, I'm just like, 
how do you have someone higher than us that we've beaten? Or like, you know, this team hasn't even won a game and they're higher than us. Or, you know, something like that. And I'm just like, where do you get this from? <laughs> like, where do you get this from? And in this scenario, it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Miami has no talent whatsoever. How are they higher than us? The Bengals, don't get me wrong. They have a couple playmakers. They have a couple pieces. But, like, no. <laughs> you know, like, just no, you know? And then you have the Redskins. Freaking Haskins sucks. Like, you know, like, there's no way they're going to do anything unless they have just so much talent that he can't possibly screw the game up. And then you have teams like um, the Giants, you know? And it's just, it's ridiculous. You know, these teams aren't doing well. You know, they don't have many pieces. We were killing it at the beginning of the season. You know, we literally had a top five offense. We had um, our defense was playing well. And then it was injury, injury, injury. Stafford's gone. We lost all our games. So it's like, I'm happy we lost all our games, you know, because then it's like, you might as well tank. You know, the NFC had such high records that there was no reason to really fight unless it was like a morale and pride thing, you know? So like, in our scenario, we were playing just fine before Stafford went down. So it makes yeah. no sense why we're so low, <laughs> let alone we're about to have the third overall pick and be able to have a huge playmaker come in and start, you know, week one, unless, you know, we trade down or like something, whatever. But like, it doesn't make sense because. No sense. At, dude. Yeah. You look at the game as a whole and as our team, we have a great kicker. You know, so there's that. And then you offensively. Said, that doesn't sound that good when you're starting I, with a great kicker. <laughs> oh, I know. But I'm, I'm just saying, like, special teams-wise, you have a kicker that rarely misses, you know. So that's that's nice. And then our offense was clicking, you know what I'm saying? Like, we were putting up points. So you look at these other teams, they don't have a great defense or a great offense. They barely have an average offense or defense, and we have a great offense. So it's just like. Dude, screw the power rankings. You know, this shit's always a joke. You know, they always hate on the Lions, and the Lions always get crapped on in the media. So it's just, it's stereotypical. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, no. It, it's a, it's an absolute joke. And, and whoever <laughs> made this, like, you, you, honestly, like, I don't get how you can be so bad at your job and continue to have a job. Because I would have been fired if I was that bad at my job. For real. Like, how can you like? Did you not look at how the record? Did you just look at the records and say oh, three wins? All right, let's just put the Lions worst. I don't. I don't even understand how because you know that we only got three wins because Stafford was hurt, and you know that Stafford's back now. So how can you put us below the Bengals, Miami, these kind of teams? What are you talking about? This is ridiculous. The Washington still has Dwayne Haskins as their quarterback. How can you put <laughs> them above us? I don't understand at all. And I like get you it. Said, Dude, I totally I get it if Stafford was not on our team and we just had no quarterback. I still wouldn't get it. I still wouldn't get it. I still wouldn't get it because we are, we still had a lead in, or a tie in, in the fourth quarter of every single game, maybe except for one. I don't remember if we did in the Vikings game or not, but in the, in the first Vikings game, I yeah. think. I don't know. We're both. I don't know. But pretty much we were in every single game, even without Stafford. Like, I, I don't – I literally do not understand how you can – put us below those kind of teams they weren't wow. they weren't in games we'd blow them out if we if we played the Bengals 10 times we'd blow them out 10 times <laughs> <laughs> well i mean we'll see with joe burrow maybe he's the next coming of patrick mahomes or something and you know maybe he can turn this team around or something like that but regardless we're not the worst that's absolutely ridiculous um, we had how many players on ir we're the worst are you kidding me like <laughs> Are you kidding me? And now we have 15, 50 million, 50, five zero, 50 million dollars to replace all these injured players and free agents. And then we have the third pick in the draft. Dude, what are you talking about? I don't get, I don't get how anybody could say that, but whatever is what it is. All right, guys, that's all we have for you guys today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you for watching our videos and thank you for the support. Um, uh, we, you know, like we've talked about many times, we're the real Detroit Lions fans. This is a community of real fans. We're not fair, fair weather fans. We're not hater fans. You know, we are real Detroit Lions fans. So if you're a real Detroit Lions fan, subscribe. Leave a comment. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you think. We want you guys to comment about Josh Garnett signing and uh, whether you think that was a low-risk, high-potential pick like we do or whether it's just a waste of time and he's probably not even going to make the team. And last thing, check the description. We're going to put links in for all those DSA members. And me and Dylan made Twitters. So 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We Check got that some. out, yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We're the real Detroit Lions fans, and uh, yeah, we're out.